1941, months before America went to war, President Roosevelt had the idea to unite various service organizations to help the morale of the troops and the home front in the event that America did go to war. Social reformer Mary Ingram immediately got to work, uniting six major civilian service organizations. The Salvation Army, the YMCA, the YWCA, the National Catholic Community Service, the National Travelers Aid Association, and the National Jewish Welfare Board. The United Service Organizations now had one central mission, to provide entertainment and boost morale for the armed forces and to raise the funds to do so. Within the first year, $16 million were raised, roughly $247 million in 2020. Across the world, USO centers began opening to provide a home away from home for American servicemen. At the outbreak of war in America, the USO was quick to respond. Centers began operating out of any building they could. Many provided recreation for GIs, such as films and dances, in addition to their famed free coffee and donuts. USO camp shows provided GIs with live entertainment. But at the start of the war, 186 of these theaters already existed across the country. By 1942, they began popping up overseas in Great Britain and Australia. The American Theater Wing worked in collaboration with the USO to provide food and entertainment for soldiers at the famous Stage Door Canteen in New York. At their height in 1944, nearly 700 shows were performed each day, and there were over 3,000 clubs across the world. In 1947, the USO was disbanded due to lack of funds, but it was restarted in 1951 for the Korean War and remains active to this day. The USO managed to bring major entertainers to troops in nearly every conflict Americans had been involved in, although they had some trouble attracting them for Vietnam. Just because USO performers weren't on the front lines didn't mean that they were completely safe. Many performers lost their lives. I can't find the exact numbers for World War II, but 28 overall. Among the most famous performers who lost their lives was Glenn Miller, the most successful and popular band leader and one of my favorite musical artists ever. On December 15, 1944, he took a plane from London to Paris to make arrangements for his band to play for the USO there. Sadly, his plane never made it, and he was reported MIA. Many more performers sustained major injuries or came down with severe illnesses during their times performing for the USO. Al Jolson was the first entertainer to perform overseas through the USO, pestering military officials to let him before the USO was even created. While performing for the troops in World War II, he contracted malaria. He continued performing at USO shows all the way through the Korean War. He ended up dying due to the strain he put himself through performing on the battlefield so often. Jolson was among the most prolific performers in the USO, second to only one. Bob Hope was by far the most prominent performer for the USO, with a career spanning 50 years. He spent 48 of those 50 Christmases overseas with American servicemen. Hope was always among the most eager to perform. During World War II, he was such an important figure that, according to war correspondent Quentin Reynolds, the Nazis appreciated Hope's value since they thrice bombed towns while he was there. During his time in Vietnam, his hotel was targeted by the Viet Cong, specifically because he would stay there. As he always held a pro-military stance, he was sometimes booed by anti-war crowds in Vietnam. He remarked that he was simultaneously surprised and horrified at the attitude towards anything involving the Vietnam War, saying, quote, Can you imagine that people in America are burning their draft cards to show their opposition, and that some of them are actually rooting for your defeat? In Hope's last Christmas show, he performed in Saudi Arabia for Americans involved in Operation Desert Shield. His show was highly censored and had no media coverage, so as not to offend the Saudis. In 1997, Bob Hope became the first and only honorary veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces for his contributions to GIs and for the morale of the nation as a whole. The USO has provided entertainment with American troops for over 75 years and has become one of the largest morale boosters for the military. Just because we're no longer at war doesn't mean it is any less important. This is why I am including a link to the USO website in the description, so if any of you feel a desire to donate, you can. Even though I'm not yet large enough to monetize my videos, 
If and when I am, any revenue from this video will be donated to the USO. Organizations like this represent everything that makes America great. They show that when necessary, we can come together as a country and support those who defend freedom for us and across the world. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Late Modern History for inside information, behind the scenes, and sneak peeks at upcoming videos. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. This is Matthew, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, where's the dear baby dear from your life? Though it's hard to pass, I know, I know, I'll be, you got the death to go, don't cry, don't cry. There's a silver lining in the sky, but my old king, cheerio, chin, chin, na, boo,